Jen. Hi everyone, I'm Lisa with North Jersey Lifestyle and Real Estate. I'm coming to you live today for our Noteworthy in North Jersey show. And um, Betty, we're sorry, but Betty was not able to be with us live today. Um, so that's why I am going to do a recap of everything uh, from February, everything we were doing in February. So here's what we focused on. I'm going to use my notes today. Betty's a little bit more experienced at this, but I'm going to use my notes. Um, so this February, we wanted to focus on our buyers. We, Betty had the idea of doing a series just for our buyers. Let's focus all on the buyers because our market has shifted so dramatically in one year that we need our buyers to be prepared and to understand what goes into buying a home right now, um, you know, in the current market conditions. So Betty's first show for North Jersey Lifestyle and Real Estate said the title was, should you buy this winter or wait until spring? So we do have buyers that are looking to buy this winter. And what we're finding is that, yes, it's true. Uh, there just is not enough inventory out there. There is a big buyer pool. And we've talked before about how um, there are a lot of people that have come from the city and are looking to, uh, looking to buy here in the suburbs, coming to North Jersey, looking for more land, looking for more space for their homes. A lot of people are, um, a lot of people are working from home now, so they need more space for their family, for their home office, for schooling from home conditions, you know, family situations have certainly changed. So we do have a big buyer pool out there and simply not enough homes on the market. So here's, what we want to tell you, the biggest takeaway in February when we're focusing on our buyers is you have to be prepared. That is the biggest thing. Uh, we need you to be prepared. So it's a tricky situation when we think about should you buy now or should you wait until the spring? So here's the deal. There are not enough homes out there for everybody who's looking to buy a home. In the spring market, which really is just upon us now, we are expected to see more homes pop up on the market. This is such a good thing. It's, and, and it makes the buyer more confident, right? When you start seeing more things on the market, you think, okay, I can get in the game, I can do this. What we are expected to see though, as there's more inventory, is we are expected to see more buyers coming out in droves, ready to buy these homes up. So really the choice is yours and we're telling you to be prepared. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So yes, you may have more luck finding a home in the spring market, but again, the competition, it, it will be stiff competition. So we're here to help you. We're always happy to help you walk through the process. Um, it may take more than one try to put an offer in. We are seeing that with our buyers that uh, you have to make your strongest offer right from the beginning. Really, you just have to make a strong offer and you have to know, um, you have to work with an experienced professional to help you get through the process. This is not the time to negotiate. Um, you can't, you have to know that when you go to look at a home, if you want to make an offer on that home, be prepared to offer over asking price right from the beginning. I, you know, recently experienced working with a first time home buyer that thought, oh, this is a great house, but this needs to be done, I, I'm not, you know, it was an older home, you know, just kind of adding up a little bit of the work that they would need to do on the home. And uh, this particular buyer wanted to make an offer under asking price, about uh, $15,000 under asking price. And I did let him know right from the beginning, we, we just have no shot. <clears throat> he insisted. 
He had an awesome down payment. He was pre-approved, completely ready to go. And, um, you know, the, the agent said, the listing agent said to us, I have two other offers waiting in the background. Like if, if you want to get in the game, you need to show your best offer right from the beginning. We did. He ended up getting the house. He offered over asking price. He ended up, you know, getting the house and um, it will be going under contract today. All good things, but we had to make sure, like I really, especially the first time home buyer, you have to know what's going on in the market today and understand that you have to ask over asking price, usually right from the beginning. It is just we are not in a market. We are not living in a time right now where it's uh, where we can negotiate. Betty and I love negotiating when we can, um, and you have to be experienced with that as well. Um, it's just that right now we we um, have to expect that there are multiple offers coming in right behind yours. So we want to be prepared. We also talked about here was the next show. So you've heard there are some things you should and shouldn't do as you're preparing to buy a home. This is very true. So let's talk finances. This was a big topic here in February with our buyers. You need to be prepared with your mortgage pre-approval in hand. You don't want any delays in making the offer. So this is why you know, it's okay to, you know, have a conversation with a mortgage lender or a mortgage banker, um, but come to us with the pre-approval before we even start looking at homes with you because you might fall in love with a home and say, okay, I'm ready to make an offer. Well, we really don't have time to wait. Uh, there's no time to wait at all. We have to submit an offer with a pre-approval letter right away. Um, we need to talk about making an offer with a contingency. That's going to go, so for a listing agent, when they're getting all of these offers, making an offer with a contingency goes in the B pile, right? Where we, need to look at the strongest offer and a strong offer is somebody that has nothing to sell. So it is possible to make an offer with a contingency, but your offer has to be a very strong offer. So we want to consider right from the beginning, if you're thinking of selling your home and buying, you want to be in the buyer pool, perhaps it's a good idea to get your home on the market get it under contract and make an offer without a contingency. So perhaps you wanna think about if your home closes before you're moving into the new place, maybe you could stay with family in the meantime, or maybe you can rent a place month to month. We can help you make all of those decisions because they are important life decisions that have to be made. Um, and this is the market condition that we're living in right now for our buyers. You want to prepare yourself mentally. So I loved this. Betty did, um, you know, her second uh, North Jersey lifestyle and real estate show in New Jersey. She said, be prepare yourself mentally and don't fall in love with the first home you fall in love with. Good advice, Betty. Don't fall in love with the first home you fall in love with. It's so true. So oftentimes when we're looking at homes and you're going to purchase a new home, it is emotional. No matter how many times we say, you know, this is a financial purchase, you want to be smart about um, making this purchase. Some, we just, we can't help but think, you know, you, you get a feeling, you get a feeling about a home. You visualize yourself living there. You picture your family, your friends, you can picture your life there. At this time, you need to know that you cannot fall in love with the house because there could be 12 offers coming in right behind yours. And I'm not kidding. There really could be 12 offers coming in right behind yours. So don't fall in love with the 
first home you fall in love with. Just keep an open mind. And I promise we'll get you there. We really will. But don't fall in love with the first home you fall in love with. I love that Betty made a do's and don'ts list for our buyers. So here we go. Let me just recap quickly. She said, do continue making all payments on time. Make sure you're making your rent payments on time. Make sure if you have a mortgage, make your mortgage payments on time. Do not falter on any of your payments. Keep working at your current employer. So um, mortgage lenders, they want to approve you for a mortgage and they need to see that there's stability in your employment. Keep your insurance company. Continue living at your current residence. These are just a few things that you should do when you're getting ready to uh, apply for a mortgage and buy a new home. Don't, do not make any major purchases. Please do not make any major purchases. Don't buy a car, don't buy a new car, a boat, don't buy uh, jewelry, furniture. Don't think, oh, I, I, want to, you know, a nice big flat screen TV, whatever, the, you know, a nice big TV, just, just live in a minimalistic way until you are finished, you know, until you're closing, until you have completed um, the purchase of your new home. So don't make any major purchases. Do not open or close credit card accounts. Leave them open. Do not close them. Do not max out your credit cards. We, we think, you know, that's pretty logical, but do not max out your credit cards and do not consolidate your debt, okay? Do not transfer bank account balances or make large deposits and do not take out any new loans. Okay, this will provide financial stability for you because any changes in your financial status can impede your ability to get a mortgage. And we need you to shine in this market. Okay, next topic, pre-qualification versus pre-approval. What is the difference? Some people don't really know. Well, a lender may give you a pre-qualification letter and, um, the, how much the bank will lend is based on your income, your assets, and your debt. A pre-qual letter is usually done, it's, it's a, like a little bit more casual and less invasive than a pre-approval letter from, from a mortgage lender or bank. A pre-qual is usually done over the phone with a basic credit review, okay? So like a soft credit review. It's based on a discussion about your credit background and the bank will rely on like uh, statements that you have about what you've earned, what you owe and your credit history. Okay, so they are digging. It is legit. A pre-qualification letter is legit. However, remember, we want you to shine as a buyer in this market and you need a pre-approval letter to be submitted with the offer for that home you fell in love with. So a pre-approval letter is a more in-depth process that includes a loan application and providing documents regarding income and assets. So they're not just looking at statements, they're going to dig a lot deeper. The lender will need to verify your financial information and will need to request authorization to check your credit history in order to analyze your debt ratio as well. Every single offer we make for our buyers has to include a pre-approval letter or this offer will not be considered valid. Honestly, it's very true. So why is this so important? Well, with so many buyers out there, we need to make sure your offer stands out. Holding your offer with a pre-approval letter versus another offer that just has a pre-qual letter, you're going to shine. And that's what we're here to do. Betty and I want you to shine. Every mortgage company is different. So this is important to note. Um, mortgage companies often like it's good to 
you know, get as much information as you can about your mortgage company. Um, mortgage companies offer different products to their clients. They have different offerings and things, um, but not all will offer a pre-approval letter from the start, which can put you behind the game. So with that being said, I am going to end our segment today of Noteworthy in North Jersey. Um, thank you for joining me. Betty will be back with you next week. Um, and I just need you to know that we are always here to help you through the process. We love what we do. We love working together and we are always here to help you through the process. I believe next month in uh, our North Jersey Lifestyle and Real Estate Show will be I believe it'll be all about sellers. I don't know. I'll put that in the comments below when Betty corrects me after she sees this video. I hope everybody has a wonderful day. Thank you for joining me and we will see you next week.